right, so we're going to cover the obliques now. Uh, we're going to show you how to do the PA obliques. There are also AP obliques that you'll see some text do. Um, typically in this uh, program, we'll teach PA obliques because we want to reduce the dose to the breast and the thyroid. When you do them facing the board as opposed to them facing the tube, you can reduce the dose by up to 90%. So that's 90% less radiation to those two areas if you just do them correctly or the way you should do them. Some older techs learn how to do them AP, so they just do them AP because they're a little afraid to try to do a PA. So if you have a tech that does that, you can certainly learn from them how to do APs because you have to know how to do that in a trauma situation. But if you're doing routine cervical spine x-rays, you should do them PA um, just out of the dosage reduction to your patients. First one we're going to do is called an LAO position. So she's going to be slightly facing the board. This is going to look at the left foramina. You always do these bilaterally, so if you do an LAO, you have to do an RAO. The patient angle is going to be 45 degrees, and the tube angle is going to be 15 degrees caught at towards the feet. So we've got this set up at 72 inches. We've got our cassette in. It's about the same size collimation as your lateral, so um, we're still going to use our landmarks from the EAM to the vertebra prominence in the back. And then side to side, we're just going to match it up to the thickness of the patient's neck. All right, so let's have the left side to a little bit. And bring the left hand slightly back. You bring the left hand slightly back, that means you can move the bucky up and down a little bit without them getting stuck on there. But at the same time, they have something to push against so that they're not wobbling back and forth. So we're a little bit low. We're going to raise it up just a tiny bit. Over that EAM. And then that a corresponding amount. And make sure her feet are apart a little bit. She's standing 45 degrees to the bucky, which means she's going to be staring at the corner of the room if you want to figure out just what 45 degrees is. And forward a little bit. You should see a little bit of light in front of her neck and a little bit of light behind her on your marker. This is her left side over here, so the left marker is going to be on this side. If you wanted to use your right marker, you would have to put your right marker on her right side over here. And because we're looking at the left foramina, we're going to use our left marker to indicate the area of interest, but also the side correction as well. Make sure you get the head in line with the body. You do not want to turn the head in a lateral position. You want to keep that in line with the shoulders and the rest of the body. When you twist the neck, you end up closing the very top portion of the foramina. So we used to teach it that way. That's very, very old school. <laughs> Plus also the wrong school to think about it nowadays. So keep that shin up. I'll extend it a little bit with the shin. Same breathing instructions as the lateral. Take a breath in. Blow it out. Relax the arms. Stop your breathing, don't breathe, and don't move. Motor exposure. I'll show you how to do the opposite side as well. So what you do is you just you want to use your right marker. If you can't use your right marker, you would just keep it on her right side. I prefer to use the same marker for all of my images so I don't have to be hunting around for two separate markers and then possibly getting them confused every once in a while. Her neck in this instance. Still orthotic, so it should go in this shape. So you want to put it directly in the middle. You want to put it down a little bit where the neck will run away from it if she does move into it just slightly. So we're in an RAO position now. This is our left marker indicating her left side over here. We are looking at the right foramen on this one. Let's bring her arm back a little bit. Shoulder against there. Looking at your two shadows in the back and the front. Always stay in the room with the patient so that you know they're not moving around. So you're going to start your breathing instructions before you leave. Let's go ahead and take a breath in, blow it out, relax the arms, and stop your breathing. Don't breathe, don't move. Rotor exposure. 